All right, well, here it is. It is official. We have the new uh, Nissan Armada is here, the 2025. We're going to dive into this, take a look at it. It's, uh, I'll be honest with you, this thing scares me. This, this, there's, I had expectations. I had things I wanted to see. I had stuff that I was hoping for. Um, there's a lot of good here, but there's, like I said, there's a lot that I really, uh, it freaks me out on this thing as far as, uh, the direction it went. And maybe I'll even save that for another video, but let's take a look at this. We'll see here on here and I'll hit some of those highlights on this thing. But, uh, so here it is, the all new Nissan Armada 2025. And, uh, they've done some amazing things like add this Pro 4X package, which is one I'm going to kind of focus on, uh, because it's got everything that we're looking for to see. And this is a great family vehicle. And as I look at it, like I said, the parts that kind of freak me out and scare me are because I'm 50 years old and I've been around for a long time and see how things go. But for families, which is what this three, three row SUV is designed for, um, you know, they don't look at things like I do. And so I can see the benefit to a lot of this stuff in there. And we are talking tech loaded with this thing. So let's get into it. So here it is right now. We have the a lot of stuff we can cover here. We got the press kit from Nissan, which gives us all the key highlights. Plus, I've watched every video on this thing. And I have a post-it note right here with a bunch of information on it for you. And then we also have, uh, you know, some more details here. And then we also have right here where we can go through and see all these different photos and kind to break things down that uh, Motor Trend was nice enough to put out for us. So we have that. So um, here we go. Let's look at a press kit here first. So we know that this thing has changed. We lost a V8. We've talked about that before, that the V8 option was going to be gone. That amazing 5.6 V8 <clears throat> built for reliability and everything like that. Those days are over. We are now a 3.5 liter. We are a twin turbo that is putting out 425 horsepower, 516 pounds of torque. The towing is still the same at 8,500. And if you compare that to the old one, this is the outgoing 2024 um, on here. We had 400 horsepower. I don't remember what the torque was. It doesn't say it right here. But uh, so you get a little bit of a jump, a little bit of a boost in here. As far as the power output is going to be for this thing, you're getting a little bit of a pop in there. You know, a little jump up. But you are going to be a 3.5. 5 liter um, twin turbo, which hopefully gives us better gas mileage. The gas mileage is not released yet on it. So, oh, but here we go. So, anyway, um, I love the fact that they added a Pro 4X option first ever. Okay, this is nice. And it's a Pro 4X done right. We are talking full time four wheel drive, four low range, and a rear locker, as well as multiple terrain modes and downhill assist control. Okay, they did this right as far as a Pro 4X. Better approach angle, 30 degree approach angle. We'll look at all that stuff, but skid plates on it. This thing is a true. Pro 4X, okay? It is not like uh, the, the BS that other companies do where, uh, like, you know, it's not like the Sasquatch version of the Bronco Sport, which basically is a couple of tow hooks and a bumper and, and that's it, okay? This is legit here. They've done this very well. Straight up love what they've done with it, okay? So, uh, but it says, for the first time ever, uh, drivers can feel more confident tackling the great off-road capability, transport with toys, 8,500-pound towing, okay? Beautiful setup. <clears throat> now, here's your, uh, your departure angles and stuff. Remember, though, it does bump me out here that on the Pro 4X model, they are coming with 20-inch wheels, but I get it. Even the Pro 4X, most people are not going to be driving this vehicle off-road that much, okay? They're not going to be airing down tires and that kind of stuff, and they want the class look, so uh, 20 is what it gets. Now, the, the Nissan, the new 25 Armada comes with 18s, um, 18s, 20, and 22-inch wheels. The 20s are what they put on the Pro 4X model. Now, it also has, um, well, the suspension is raised with the suspension raised to its highest setting, two inches above standard height, okay, it imp it offers impressive off-road matrix, okay, now this has got air suspension on it, adaptive electronic air suspension, okay, we'll talk about this more in detail here for you in a minute, also has a rear locker, it's got the rear, uh, uh, it's got the skid plates that are on there that we talked about, it's got all-terrain tires, metal underbody skid plate, and a unique front face front end for approach angle, so the Pro 4X, if you jump the air suspension up and kick this thing up, you're looking at 9.6 inches of ground clearance. Very impressive for a three-row full-size SUV. 
33 inches of approach angle, 25.5 breakover, 24.5 departure angle. <coughs> You're not going to be rock crawling this thing anyway. Uh, why do they keep showing us the same little clip right here? But uh, um, you're not going to be rock climbing it anyhow. So these are very good numbers for everything that most people are going to do off-road. Um, now, it's got eight selectable drive modes. Standard, eco, sport, tow, snow, sand, rock, mud, and rut on a Pro 4X. That's awesome. And it also has uh, hill descent control. And it, like I said, it is also a full-time four-wheel drive. We will get into that. We're going to shit on some highlights. Then we will take a look at all the... The images and the details on here, it is still is using a 9-speed transmission with paddle shifters as well on here too, which is, thank God they got paddle shifters. At least that's cool because I do not like the way they have went to their uh, gear selector on here. But um, it uh, has 40% increased gear ratio versus a prior 7-speed transmission with quicker upshifts. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of tech, okay? So much tech is in this thing. With the blind spot monitoring, you get the trailer brake controller standard on the Platinums and the Pro 4X, or Platinum Reserve. Um, okay, right here, so you can get it 18, 20s, or 22-inch wheels, depending on the options that are here. They're going to go on and on about this. We're going to, we can cover more in the pictures. So let's just kind of dive into the pictures. The back end in here, the trunk space has grown. This has got, uh, what, 18% bigger in the trunk, and you can see how all of these seats lay down. It's a beautiful feature on this thing. Nice setup, and it's all power. You can touch one of these buttons and drop all these seats without having to walk around and do it. One touch of a button electronically lowers the rear seat down flat, and then it uh, hit the other button and it drops these two. They just kind of spring forward and drop. But this is full lay flat layout in here. I love that. This is giving you the option to camp in this thing all the time. It's so much room in it and nice lay flat capability in here. They did the cockpit area or the uh, the cab area here is done absolutely perfect. Okay, just straight up amazing. You're getting all your wireless CarPlay, Android Auto, all the BS stuff in there, 12 speaker system. Um, now, the as far as the uh, the dash layout on here, it's kind of interesting here. We'll cover that, but you get the standard one gets dual 12 inch displays, where the Pro and the Platinum Reserve get dual 14.3 inch screens that may sound weird but they integrated it very well into this so um we're going to dive in take a look at stuff because that pretty much wraps this up on their their release here of this stuff that's on here right here it says uh uh, the 25 are made at dual 12.3 touch screens, one for, inst for instrument cluster and a touch, one touch screen for infotainment. The Pro 4X Platinum and Platinum Reserve upgrade to the dual 14.3 inch. Uh, physical rotary dial controls the drive modes on this thing too as well. So uh, we'll take a look at this and see what we got on here. So let's just glance through here real quick. You can see some of the layout. Here's your dual screens. Take a look at that, okay? It is basically one huge, long digital panel on a dash that's integrated together. Now, I like this look much better than I like the stupid uh, iPad glued on a dashboard look. This is much more seamless and integrated well. I do hate that it is all digital. This whole thing is a digital screen. It's basically driving, staring at a laptop. Um, and there's nothing nothing analog about it whatsoever. This screen goes out, you're in major trouble too. This is, this is just an ugly... Uh, technology thing that people, all companies are doing. But again, I'm old. I like analog gauges. I like the way it was. I like the simplicity of, you know, your little infotainment center here and then having that amazing, you know, um, dash layout on here, right here with analog gauges. I like this. I also really like having an actual shift lever here. Okay, I like this design. But again, I'm old school. This is the world we live in and this is what people today want that are the people that are buying this i'm not buying it so they don't care what my opinion is so i get that but it's definitely unique not a fan of this push button um you know gear select shifter right here but at least it's very small low profile and integrated and it's right there on that flat or on that horizontal not horizontal, sorry, angular um, section of this. So it's real easy to see and feel, and I love the high recess button on the reverse so you can find that. It's going to be pretty easy to operate this without looking. Okay, that's a nice feature of it. You do not have to look. You'll be able to reach over and just touch this and make it happen. That's kind of a cool setup there. Um, 
And we'll get into some more detailed pictures. I am not a fan of this cockpit looking style thing that all these vehicles do now. The worst is the new Expedition. It's on, I, I cannot. I do not like this. I do not like this weird middle area in separating yourself from the whole rest of the world in the car. It feels claustrophobic. My dad's uh, 2023 Toyota Sienna minivan is like this, and I cannot stand it. I do not like this even a little bit with the weird little pass-throughs underneath. But again they're not making it for me. Okay. This isn't, I'm not the one there. They, there's obviously people that love this stuff for me. It's, I, I don't like it, but it's, it's there. Um, you can see that. Look at this big hump thing in here. It just kind of, I'm, I'm not a fan of this look to it. Now the Armada or the Armada Armada. Remember I lived next to a town called Armada for a lot of years. And that's how I always say it. Um, but, uh, this new Armada is very clean lines and well integrated. Okay, I like the setup. It looks good in here compared to a lot of these other ones that are out here now. You have the option of a bench rear seat, or you can get the captain chair real rear seat with walkthrough where you can step right through in here too. So you get the, the features of both. Um, one of the things that's nice to note is when these seats, even on a bench seat, when they are flipping forward so you can get access to the third row, you can do it with a car seat even attached. They are designed to pivot as one whole unit, not back first and then roll. They pivot as one whole unit so your car seat doesn't have to be removed to be able to get in there. You probably want to take your kid out of it, but you can do that. So like I said, a lot of nice features on this thing. Um, they did it well, and they did the Pro 4X version incredibly well. Even has tow hooks on it. Like I said, look at Toyota still. We're, we're going into year four. Three, four, whatever we are in a Tundra, and it still doesn't have tow hooks on it. This one does in the front. They are right here, and they are angled down nice and low, and they are under that approach angle. They are tucked in, but they are usable, and they are not going to break bumpers and fascia off to use them. So they're doing a great job with this thing. Let's look at these Motor Trend pictures here. Okay, we got the Platinum right here, and then uh, you're going to get into the Pro 4X, which is what we're going to talk about mostly right here. Love the look. You can see, definitely dedicated city vehicle, um, and here your more off-road capable one. You can see the approach angle difference on here, how they scoop that front end up. I love the tough look of that. Looks amazing. Um, they did it well. I love the integrated side steps into this right at body line um, on both of these. Okay, those are nice, how nice and tight and tucked up those are. It's a very competitive world. This this uh, Tahoe Expedition, Nissan Armada, Sequoia. Okay, this is a very cutthroat you know the jeep grand wagoneers this is a this large three-row suv is a very competitive world here so um here's that cockpit again in here too like i said pretty unique um uh the seats are pretty cool but i'm not a fan of a lot of this stuff so as far as the specs we're seeing on this thing like i said i'm gonna look at my cheat sheet that i made here a little bit um you do get a 3d visualizer camera on this on a pro 4x model okay so what it does is you can actually see everything Thing around you and it's in three dimension and you can remove it and change it so it's a very advanced 3d camera system 360 degree camera system on this thing which will be very cool it's pretty neat to see uh, talked about the displays you got 12 way heated and ventilated power seats in this thing uh air suspension now the air suspension on this what it's going to do is it's going to lift this up or take it down two inches either way so you have your standard ride height and then you can actually drop this for loading in the back they even give you a button in the back i'll show you but you can lower this down two inches um to get in there and get access in and out of it if you want to. And it can go two inches above normal ride height when you put it in four low mode so that you got the off-road ground clearances in this thing. So pretty sweet setup there. Uh, I recovered the modes and you do get the brake controller immediately. It looks like this, even this Pro 4X model, you're looking about 1,400 pounds of payload in this. So very, very well done. This is plastic on the front. This is not a full metal skid plate bash plate on the front, but the skid plates are, are metal underneath there. This is a plastic, um, not a real bash plate. Okay, but you can see how the tow hooks are. Look how nice low down and you know how exposed they are and accessible. We really like that on this this feature of this thing. Here's those integrated side steps. Like I said, I love how clean lined 
those side steps are for each uh, for each row on this. So done very well. The wheels are gorgeous. The truck is gorgeous. We do got full roof rack rails up here, which gives you options. Look at the angle on the back end of this Pro 4X to give it that departure angle. Look at this thing dump in here. I mean, this thing is on the level. This thing is is a Land Cruiser destroyer is what this is okay when you think about it all right land cruiser is cool yes and some people are, oh it's 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 center lock too i don't care it's the same thing real center lock means nothing to me when you put a transfer case in you're basically center locked anyway when you kick into four low it doesn't matter okay this is gonna do everything that thing can and it's got a lot going for it this is impressive vehicle right here with a lot of room a lot of capability and a lot of options they did this truck very very nice now um, inside you got like I said heated ventilated seats you got this cheesy weird that everybody is going to now stupid uh, Jetsons looking uh, center console here with this little weird pass through the pass through on this one looks very small disappointingly small you can't even like at least on my uh, my dad's Cine Sienna minivan my wife can like put her purse under there Okay, this doesn't even look big enough to do anything like that. This is kind of a weird, I don't I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, you got that pass-through option there. Council here, council, you know, you got your stuff in here that's pretty good. You got that option in the back here, cup holders inside of here. There's eight cup holders in this vehicle, which is a very nice feature. And here is the uh, full version, the 60-40 split bench, where you just saw in the other one, you were looking at the captain seats that we are showing you in this one. Here's the, the pass-through captain chairs, which you can have either one of these. And uh, moving through, you got your, the seats I think look cool. And you can even get them as massaging seats in the uh, Platinum Reserve. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Here's that back end. Now here's your button controls over here where you can control the suspension, air suspension, bring it up and bring it down so that you can benefit from easier load height. And then these are all your buttons to drop all the seats down in one swoop shot. Boom, there you go, dropping right down. Love the little lava orange accents that Nissan's doing in here. Um, and I, this looks very Navigator-ish. I like the look to it. It's very classy. I like the wheels. These are going to be those 22s. It's a good looking look on this thing. Uh, let's see what we got in here. Here's your layout in here. Now here's, <coughs> here's your mode dial. I like the mode dial. This is for all your mode settings and your tow, your trailer tow and your eco mode and your standard snow, uh, rut, mud, you know, rocks, all your stuff is right here. Your downhill control right here in the middle. Here is that little weird... Um, like I said, you're now shift levered. Remember, this went from this. Okay, this is how this one was set up, which I liked. Okay, I like this setup. It was pretty nice. I'm not a, not sure I'm a fan of this, but it, at least it's simple, and it doesn't take up a tremendous amount of room to get to that and use it. So that's kind of nice. Got your auto start stop right there. Um, here's your auto for your air suspension, I believe is what that is on there. I'm not sure. But here's where you would have your, in the Pro 4X, you're going to have your four auto button is here. Okay, and you're going to have four high, four low, and you're going to have uh, your rear locker button right here. So it gives you all these off-road features right there. I love the big, bold toggle for your temperature climate controls. Simple, easy to feel buttons that are going to be right there and obvious. I think this is a good layout on here. Your camera mode features and options. So this is nice. Now, there are some things in here that, that, um, that are scary. Okay, like one of them that we don't see in here that we know is in this vehicle. Let me see if I can see it somewhere. But I, I learned it watching videos. Uh, there, I do not see it in here. And they're not showing it on the inside. Uh, let me check and just to see. Uh, can we see it up here? Yeah, we can see it up here. But um, way up in the front of this, okay, right up in the front by the mirror is a interior camera. We're going to look at this again, see if we can pick it up. Look at this setup and this, how nice that layout is. But let me uh, shoot back to the top of this and look at those for one more sec. And I'm going to scroll through them quick to the interior ones. Uh, see if we see it, the, where the mirror is. Okay, right here in this one, we can see it here. But all right, see here how you got the rear view mirror? And then right up here, there's this weird little black box thing right here. That black box is a interior camera. Okay, it's a camera that shows the whole inside. And it is controlled by those feature buttons that we saw in the middle of this knob um, that was right here. This thing right here. Okay, but there's a camera that records the whole inside of the cabin. 
and they say that it's for you to be able to have fun and do things on trips, um, it'd be the first thing I'd be putting tape over it myself because I believe that it is a way of privacy invasion even if they don't tell us. They tell us we get to turn it on and off. I don't buy that one second there. Um, I believe that that camera is there to record what's going on and then also up there in that console as well which they are not showing us that we're seeing in the videos of this thing is that there is also a temperature, a biometric temperature sensor in there that monitors our temperatures and they say that is so that a, they can regulate the uh, climate control in there. Even if we got it set on like 70 and it realizes we're getting too hot, it can regulate that. What I'm assuming it is, is it's monitoring our vitals and our stats and things like that. Again, to see if we've been drinking, if we're getting tired, things of that nature. And that monitor sensor is right up in here above the rear view camera. And it monitors everybody in the cabin with a biometric type uh, temperature sensor up here. Okay, the tech is getting out of hand. This thing is getting kind of scary. Um, again, we'll save that for another article. What do I think of this thing? Um, I love what they did with the Pro 4X. I love the direction it went. This little thumb wheel, this rolling thumb wheel uh, space ball right here. This is pretty cool too. So you get all these features in here. They've done this thing very well. It's a very high class, beautiful, beautiful SUV. The Pro 4X is a true off-road version of a off-road um, full size, you know, off-road full-size SUV. Okay, not many of them have that. It's a fantastic that they've done it right and did it that you know did it the way they did with the Pro 4X. There's the only thing that bothers me here is not even a motor. I can deal with the motor. It is a massive amount of tech that is in this thing. Everything is computer or electronic controlled. It scares the crap out of me. This thing wants to, it's going to end up monitoring everything we're doing. It's kind of weird on that, but it sure is beautiful. Um, like I said, some things don't grow on me too well. I like old school things, but um, I can see where the, the you know, your, your 30 year old or 35 year old, you know, moms would love this thing okay it's got all their apple everything their tech stuff it's got all the shiny woohoo bells and whistles yet it's got the function and capability it's beautiful it's got plenty of room for the families um dad i mean i can see where this generation of 30 and 40 year olds this is the ultimate vehicle and it fits right up their alley for most of them as far as that uh combining the urban and the adventure side of a vehicle i think this pro 4x kills it so let me know your thoughts down below we'll have more videos coming out on this comparing uh the old one versus the out one um like i said we'll talk more on some of the tech but here's where we're standing at on this and i'm wondering what your thoughts are let me know down below thanks for watching